Hello everyone and welcome to today's Demo On Demand. My name is Michael Pay, I'm the CTO at Concept Searching and today we're going to be taking a look at Concept Searching support for SharePoint across multiple environments. Concept Searching solutions can be used to process documents in all SharePoint environments from SharePoint 2007 onwards. Today we'll be demonstrating our provider hosted add-in product which can be used both in an Office 365 environment and on-premises. One of the biggest difficulties in applying metadata throughout a heavily used environment is the tendency for end users to mismanage metadata. Many users will simply select the first available value or leave the field unfilled. Another key issue is the subjective nature of tag selection for an end user, whose job role will likely influence their selection. This issue really only becomes harder as the number of documents and the number of document repositories increases. Concept Classifier resolves this issue by automatically applying highly accurate tags across the whole library within SharePoint across all of your site collections, based on an analysis of the document's content and metadata. And for customers operating in a hybrid environment, we can also support scenarios where you need to manage your term sets across multiple environments on a granular basis, whether that be purely on-premises or as a split between SharePoint on-premises and SharePoint Online. To begin with, what we're going to do is take a look at the end user experience, how the end user perceives auto classification in SharePoint and auto classification in action. Here we have one of the SharePoint Online document libraries that we'll be using for our demonstrations today. We can see a few different managed metadata columns residing on this library. We have IPSV, Enterprise and Workflow. And for the most part, our auto classifications are being applied based on an analysis of the document's text. And what that really means is we're looking for the key words and key compound terms within these documents to align the documents to our taxonomy hierarchy. And we're doing that based on a rule and score based structure. If we scroll through the library, it's important to note that auto classification is being applied consistently and accurately throughout the whole library. And I think the main takeaway from this is the number of terms that are being applied to these documents. One of the things that is particularly difficult to do is select these number of terms as an end user, not only based on the time requirements that are required to select this number of managed metadata terms, but also to accurately select all of the possible terms for a document in the taxonomy hierarchy without knowing all of the terms within the structure. And that's where concept searching, concept classifier really bring in their value in terms of always managing to apply all of the possible and best auto classifications to the documents across the whole corpus. So now we're going to look at how those auto classifications can get into SharePoint and we're going to do that in a couple of different ways. The first scenario we're going to take a look at is a bulk upload scenario. So to do this I'm going to drag some documents from my local computer into the SharePoint library. During the upload process notifications will be sent from SharePoint to the concept searching server to notify concept searching of the new documents. Concept Classifier will then auto classify those documents and push the classifications back to SharePoint without affecting the modified date or versioning information. While we wait for that to process, I'm going to look at the other scenario, which is the upload of a single document. So if I grab one of my documents here, what I'm going to do is look at the process from an end user perspective as to what information they would have when auto classification occurs. So, as the document is being uploaded, the first thing that will happen is a notification will be sent to concept searching to grab the information on what fields are auto classifiable. Those will then immediately be made available to the end user as information to show them what is going to be auto classified by concept searching. The second stage is concept searching will then send those auto classifications as it is now done and populate the form for the end user. The end user then has the option to make a decision based on those auto classifications, potentially amending them or adding to them if they so desire, or perhaps make a decision based on those auto classifications to delete the document or move it to a separate location that might be more appropriate for it. The end user also has some other information that's available to them that might help them in completing several business processes. The first one is the ability to view why the document was classified the way it was. And this really helps in terms of ensuring that users don't get jaded with the process of auto classification. It's very white box by nature and allows them to immediately see how that document is being scored, how it is being tagged, and then they can make a decision as to whether they continue with those auto classifications or potentially raise some incorrect classifications with their knowledge manager. 
What we can also do from this interface is immediately see if this document has been uploaded in multiple locations. And we can do that even if the document has been slightly edited, potentially, or is in a completely different file format. So with the view duplicates functionality, what's actually occurring is another request is being sent to the concept searching server. The concept searching server then analyzes the actual text of the document and finds relevant documents that contain the same terminology, the same text patterns, and that are also around the same lengths. But what we're really looking for here is not only the exact matches, but also potentially the different versions of the document that we may wish to pick up on and then append our version to, or potentially delete the other version. So here we can see two exact matches of the document in different locations that particularly show us we might not want to upload this document to this location. And we can also see a smaller version of the document that's in a different file format. So this really shows quite how easy the auto classification experience can be for the end user and how quickly you can drive a lot of value from that process. And while we've been waiting for that document to uh, process and looking at the functionality that was available, what we should see when this page reloads is all of the auto classifications have been pushed into SharePoint, ensuring that they're immediately available for our search experience and potentially for other processes such as records management. One thing that's important to know is that with concept searching, the applied metadata always resides in the SharePoint term store. And by that, I don't mean just the structure of the terms, but also the classification rules themselves used to apply those tags to a document. We store these as custom properties on the terms within the term set. And this is particularly important to ensure that when a system administrator takes a backup of the SharePoint environment, they also take a backup of the concept classifier classification configuration. Importantly, unlike other solutions on the market, we always treat the data in the term store as our master copy. We do not replicate or copy the term set data. But, of course, it's not particularly convenient to edit the classification rules within the term store. So we, for this, we provide a product called Taxonomy Manager, which I'm now going to take a look at. Taxonomy Manager is an advanced taxonomy management interface which provides a wealth of tools to allow for the creation of rules efficiently, easily and accurately. On the main form we can see some of the rules that have been created. In most cases we find this is a set of vocabulary that allows us to recognise when a document is about a particular topic. The creation of these rules can be automated based on an analysis of the organization's documents, either through a predefined training set or by utilizing the integrated search engine to identify suitable documents. We can also get instant feedback when tuning these rules to validate the impact of our changes. If you'd like to see any more information on the features within Taxonomy Manager, then please watch one of our other webinars which focuses on demonstrating the advanced features available. For the remainder of our session, I'm going to be focusing on our integration with OneDrive for Business. In particular, how content can be tagged and subsequently monitored with our taxonomy workflow product. A key use case for this is the identification of sensitive content which needs to be tracked or acted upon in some way. In this particular library, we have a number of documents that are being tagged and monitored by concept searching. The tagging not only improves the findability of documents within search, but also is used to drive our taxonomy workflows to enforce corporate policy. And this provides us with the ability to perform a specific action if and when a document matches a specific criteria. If I go across to our workflow configuration, what we can see with our example here is if a document is tagged as containing PII or personally identifiable information, I'm going to migrate it to SharePoint. And what I'm also going to do is maintain the structure. This is particularly important if we were monitoring a number of personal sites to ensure that we know where that document came from so we could potentially migrate it back if and when we accept that it was migrated incorrectly or is acceptable in that location now. So what I'm going to do is very simply upload a document to OneDrive. But I'm going to make it a bit more interesting. The document I'm going to upload is going to be an image and it's going to be a scan of a page which contains a credit card number. So when I drag this document into the library, once again, it's going to send a notification to the concept searching server. The concept searching server will then start processing it. It's going to collect. It's then going to perform OCR on the document to extract as much text as possible. And the final stage will then be identifying the credit card number from the OCR text within that image and then moving that document to SharePoint Online in a different location. 
Now in this particular instance the use case really would be looking for sensitive information that is in public locations that should perhaps be moved to a location that is quarantined or private. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be moved out of Office 365 but it's going to be moved to a more secure location. So this is something that we can then apply across all of our personal sites or perhaps all of our public sites to make sure that we never have content residing in those locations that we wouldn't want to be seen by the people that have access to those sites. Effectively enforcing corporate security policies across each of our locations. What we can also do off the back of our workflows is send notifications to identify that this process has taken place and also perhaps do other actions such as delete it from the environment or make sure that it's set to the correct security settings within that environment, locking it down to restrict public access to it. So if we go across to our document library where it's being moved to, what we're looking to see when we refresh the page is some new folders in this library. And the reason for that is that we said we were going to maintain the structure in the new location. So as it's migrated across to the library, what we're hoping to see is a folder entitled Mike P, which is my folder being uh, created in this particular library. And then beneath that, the folder structure that we had within our OneDrive location down to the item that we saw there. And what we should also expect to see is the auto classifications that are appropriate for that particular document. So here we can see the folder that has been created by the migration. And if we drill down through the folder structure, we should find the document that we uploaded to the OneDrive location. And the last stage of the workflow configuration is not only to migrate it to that destination, but to identify to the end user why it's been migrated. So what we can actually see here is the Visa card number that was identified during the workflow process and has been pushed into that particular field. And as per normal, we can then view the same information if we go to edit properties, as well as the auto classification information. We can see there the text, obviously, of the OCR image there. The last thing that the migration configuration has done is identify that the migration source has been pushed across. And that migration information allows us to potentially move it back to the original location if it was quarantined incorrectly. That marks the end of the webinar today. What we've seen is the ability to easily tag content in SharePoint Online, specifically Concept Searching's native integration with OneDrive for Business, which is of particular use for those companies concerned with monitoring the content that is being shared by their end users. We've shown how auto classification can be applied to documents within SharePoint Online and how taxonomy workflow can be used to then perform actions as a result of those auto classifications in near real time. As an addendum to this, it's worth mentioning that in hybrid configurations, concept searching provides easy methods of synchronizing the terms and their rules across the multiple SharePoint instances, whether that be SharePoint 2010, 2013 or above. Thank you for watching this short webinar today. For more information on this and all of our products, please visit our website at www.conceptsearching.com. Thank you.